Want to transform your data lookups from tedious to effortless? Hello and welcome. If you're looking to enhance your data lookup skills, you come to the right place. In this video, we'll explore the XMatch function, a neat little function that can simplify your data retrieval process. From basic applications to advanced techniques, we got you covered. We'll start by introducing XMatch and its syntax. You'll learn how to use it and find specific data points quickly and efficiently. With a step-by-step -step guidance and practical examples, you'll see how XMatch can streamline your workflow and make your data task easier. Let's get started. The simplest way to see what XMatch does is just to use it. What we can do here is I'll just type city here. So let me bring back the row number for city. So that's what XMatch does. So if I put something like Detroit here, and I want to bring back the first row that has the word Detroit, what I can do is type in equal XMatch, and press tab. And you can see that there are a couple arguments it takes. Two of them are required and the rest are optional. But let's go through the function arguments window here. It makes it a lot, a lot easier to understand what it's doing. So my lookup value is going to be this cell, I13, the lookup array. Where is it going to look that up at? It's going to look up the city column. So I'm going to pick from C2 to C21. No, let's do this. Since we have row number one here starting first, let's start with the header row two. And I'm going to select all that. And for the match mode, there are a couple of different match modes. Um, and from the documentation, you can see that there are several match modes. If I go on help uh, search for this function, you can see that there are a couple match modes here. Uh, by default, it looks for an exact match. And it can go for next smallest match, the next largest match, and there's just wildcard match. Now let's see what that does later on. I'm going to do that quickly, but we're going to go with the default here. And here's the search mode, that fourth argument. You can search first to last, which is default. If you do a negative one here, you can search from the last to the first. So starting at the bottom of the list. But for the most part, we're going to be searching from first to last. Let me go back into the Excel and let's keep it at these arguments here. Click OK. It's going to pick out 12 because Detroit, it's going to give me row 12. And you can see row 12 here, Detroit shows up. So that's this most simple explanation of what X match does. It just brings back the row number. But remember, we had that wildcard match. And that's what makes this a little bit different from the older function called match. This X match does a wildcard match, uh, amongst other things. But this is that kind of the cool thing. So if I went there and let's go into the form of the bar here and type comma, and you can see we have our wildcard match. I'm going to select that. Close parentheses, press enter. It's still going to give me 12. But let's say, let's look for another city. We don't want to spell another city. It's just too much to spell. And let's do Minneapolis, M-I-N-N. -N, and I'm just going to put enter. And you can see it doesn't bring back any value. But if I put in a star, shift, star, press enter, it's going to bring back row 18, which is Minneapolis, if you didn't want to spell all that out. That's what that wildcard argument does for you. So it makes it a little bit easier. So if you put this into a dashboard or into some form, it just makes it easier for your stakeholders to enter in information. Now, XMatch doesn't really work in isolation. It doesn't really do a good job in it by itself. It does a better job when you incorporate it with other functions. And one of those combinations is with the index function. So let's do a example here. We got a name and we're going to, we want to bring back the city, right? So we want to bring back the city for that. And if I enter a name here, like let's do the first one, John Doe. I wanted to bring back San Francisco. Let's do an X match here. And I'm going to look up this value, comma. I'm going to look my lookup array. Where am I going to look up? I'm going to look up in the name column here. Select that from A1 to A21. I won't do the wildcard match in this case. Close parentheses, press enter. It's going to show up in the second row, right? But we don't want that. We want to bring back the city. So we have to wrap this in an index function. So what index does is it brings back the lookup array of where the row is. So this is going to be row two. What array do we want to match it to? So we want to match it. Let's move this over here. We want to match it to the city. So I'm going to select C1 to C21, comma. Let's move this again. This is in the way. And so what it's going to do, it's going to look up in this array, the second row, the second row. So it's going to bring back San Francisco. So if I close parentheses here, press enter, we have San Francisco, right? Let's do an, let's do an easy one. Kevin Harris. Type in Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris. And it's going to bring back San Jose, right? San Jose, the 12th row. So that's what it does when you combine the index with XMatch. That's when it becomes a powerful lookup function. 
Now that's a simple function. Let's go to something that, that's a little bit more complex, a two-dimensional match. When we say the two-dimensional match, we want to look up maybe something in the row column. Maybe we want to look up something in this column here, the first column, and then the first row of multiple columns here. So basically a two-dimensional match. In the north region in December, we want to bring back that value. Let's see how we can do this. Now I'll put in my headers here, let's say region, and then we have month. And like I said before, maybe the region is going to be north, north, and then the month is going to be December, right? And so what we want to do, let's bring back the quantity, this the quantity values here. So what we need to do now, we're going to have two X match functions inside an index. So the index is going to be this whole array here from B2 to M5. And then what index will do is going to look in that array and it's going to look at the intersection between the columns and the rows. So well, how do we do that? Let's try it out. I'll type index, press tab. My array is B2 to M M5. And I'm going to use two match functions. So you can see here, it's going to look at first the row number and then the column number. So we're going to pick out the row number first, right? And so the row number, we want it to match it by the region, which is this first one. And we're going to use the X match function, bring back the row of this value and try to look it up here, north, south, east, west. All right, and so it's going to bring that back and we're going to do an exact match. So all you need to do is put in these two arguments. We have these two arguments, P2 and then the array A2 to A5, close parentheses. But that is just for our row. Now we want to look at the column. So I'm going to press comma and you can see it is highlighted or made this bold, the column number. So that's going to be another X match function. X match, press tab, and we want to look up this December value. And we just want to look it up within this array. So you can see that we have this lookup array and I'm going to select my lookup array B1 to M1. Close parentheses and then close parentheses again. You can see the tooltip disappeared, press enter, and it's going to bring back 661, right? So now it's going to do a two dimensional lookup. Now, does this really work? Well, let's change something. Let's change this to West and let's, let's keep that December. And it should bring back 656, press enter. And now you see 656 is there. So that's how I can do a two dimensional lookup. Well, what if I have a little bit more complexity in my lookups? We'll go to this multi match lookup. We want to do a multiple match. Maybe you want to look up city, state, and sex, and we bring back a name. So I'm going to type in city here. City. Let's create my header tier, state, and then sex. Let's make it easy so we know that we want to pick out the last one. We want to get the name. I'll put name here. We want to get the name of the per oops. I put out name here. We want to get the name of the person that fits these criteria. So city. Let's let's look look down here. It'll be Boston, and then the state is Massachusetts. Uh, let's let's forget that. I'm gonna I'm not even gonna bother trying to spell that out. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. And sex is female. And let's make this let's let's make this auto fit here. Double click the auto fit. So in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to use some some math when you really think about it. So we're going to multiply the lookups. So that, what does that mean? Let me write this out first. So I'm going to do index, right? Because we want to get our name. So we want to bring back our name array here. Press comma. And what we want to do is we want to do an X match. So we want to match three things. So I'm going to do X match. So here's where the math comes into play. So I'm going to type the number one here. So what the one does is we want to look up the number one based on some product or in a, in a way multiplication of our other values. So what I'm going to do is look at the first the city, select this array, C2 to C21. Does that equal this value here? Let's move this tooltip here. Oops, let's close that. Let's move the tooltip around because it's in the way. All right, does that equal Boston, Massachusetts? And which one of these values in this array match that? So I'm going to close parentheses here. And now I'm going to put an asterisk times. My other one is going to be state. So that's going to be in open parentheses. State does D2 to D21 equals this value. Close parentheses. And then my third multiplication is, is this going to be the sex, right? So open parentheses. 
E2 to E21, does that equal this value in I6? Close parentheses, and then close parentheses again. You can see the tooltip disappeared. Press Enter. I got an NA here because I think I forgot to put an open parentheses here. Let me go back here. That's supposed to have a open parentheses. That in itself is a calculation, so I think it needs one more parentheses. Press Enter, and now you have Ashley Scott down there. Now, does this really work? Well, let's try it. Let's look for the first one, John Doe. We'll type in uh, the city of San Francisco, right? San Francisco, and then the state's California. Female doesn't work, but let's type male, and we're going to get John Doe. And how does this work? Well, let's put it through the formula evaluator. And where's the formula evaluator? Go to formulas, go to evaluate formula, and it's going to come up here. And this is a great tool to help you troubleshoot if you ever got errors on your functions or combination of formulas. Go to evaluate, and you can see what it's doing here. It's going to look at that match function. It's going to look and bring back the first one or city. So it's going to bring back the San Francisco to Boston array, all that list, right? And it's going to see which one equals San Francisco. The first one's going to equal San Francisco. And it's going to say true with the rest being false, right? So if I click evaluate, it goes true, and then everything is false. Those trues and falses are ones and zeros. We're not going to see it here because it's going to do it in, in the background. The trues are ones and the falses are zeros. And it's going to go through no multiplication effort, right? So if I click evaluate again, what you'll see here is it's going to look at the second one where it's going to look at state and bring back that array and see if it matches the array here, California. Right? You can see California here. And it's the first one here. So it's going to be the same, true, and then the, with the rest being false. If I click on evaluate, we've got true, true here, right? These first two values our California, so it's going to bring back true. And now let's go to the third one, evaluate, and we're going to look at mail here. Click evaluate again. Ah, see, now, now it's brought back the ones and zeros, and it's doing the math here, where it's multiplying those trues and falses together. The first one was true, multiplied by the first one, which is also true, which is state, it brings back a one. The first one for the, the in the second position, it was a zero, because that was false, multiplied by true, the California, which is one, which gives a zero. So everything is zero. So that's what it's doing. Now the third part here is we're gonna click evaluate and it's gonna do the same thing. It'll bring back the array here and it's gonna do the calculation, does it equal male? And it'll click evaluate and you're gonna have a bunch of trues and falses, right? True, false, true, false, right? True, false, true, false, all down this array. Click evaluate again, click evaluate again. And what's going to happen is it, does, it did that multiplication. So these three things, when evaluated to it, so this is true, this is true, this is true, that's going to be one. This is false, this is false, this is false, that's going to be zero. That's that zero there. All the rest are going to be zeros. So it's going to look for that one. Where does it match here in this array? It's going to match that first one, which is row two. Click evaluate. It's row two here, but it's the first place setting there because we, we didn't select A1. We, we selected A2. We started on the second row of our array selection, right? A2, C2, D2, E2. So that's the first row of our selection. That's why we have that one there. That's why it's going to bring back John Doe. If we click Evaluate, brings back John Doe. That's basically what this is doing. And that's the nerdier part of this one. But you can see the magic of what it does. And if you had any problems with any of these functions, you can always go to the Evaluate Formula to see where exactly does it error out. And it kind of helps you troubleshoot to which part of your combination of formulas is messing it up. So that's a little tip there to help you evaluate your formulas. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this guide to XMatch both informative and practical. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss an update. Have any questions or tips of your own? Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. See you in the next video.